Hello, mathematicians. My name is Matt Sorbo, covering the algebra lessons for Skew the Script. Today, we'll be discussing exponential growth with percent rates, specifically in the context of wealth inequality over time. Without further ado, let's skew it. Welcome into lesson 5.2 in our Skew the Script algebra series, today discussing exponential growth with percent rates. Consider these two houses. While they are located just a mile away, it's clear that the wealth behind these two houses are a world apart. Uh, this sort of wealth inequality is something that occurs very frequently in our society and in recent years has actually been increasing. So our key analysis today is asking the question, why is wealth inequality increasing over time? If you'd like to follow along with today's lesson, check out the link below. Feel free to print or download the guided notes to work with as we go through this video. We'll be starting with discussing percent change. Um, specifically, we'll be talking about transforming money in terms of stocks. A stock is simply defined as a small ownership share of a company. Um, so for example, if you buy a stock of Coca-Cola, you're a part owner of a tiny part of Coca-Cola. If the company makes profits and gains value, your stock rises in value. And on the flip side, if the company suffers losses, your stock loses value. Many American families invest their savings in stocks so that their money can grow over time. Um, many of these wealth investments will also multiply in value. So for example, homes, bonds, stocks, and other type of wealth investments usually, hopefully, gain future value as a percent of their current value. Um, so let's think about this in the context of percent change. Imagine that you invest $100 in the stock that you expect to grow by 6% in value each year. How much is that stock expected to be worth in one year's time? Well, let's say we start essentially with our $100 and we earn 6% extra. Um, so that's 6% extra is 6% uh, of $100. Uh, and of, in this case, uh, means multiply since we're talking about percents. So we get 0 0.06 times 100 equals $6. And our stock is now worth $106 after one year. Another way to kind of calculate this is, again, think of $100 plus 6% extra and multiply $100 by uh, 1 plus 0 0.06, uh, which is 100 times 1. 0.06, um, which gets us to the same answer of $106. So let's think about why this actually works. Um, the $100 is actually distributed to the 1 and the 0.06. Uh, so it's the same as doing the 100 plus $6, uh, which we uh, got from earlier. Again, the 1 kept the starting value of 100, and the 0.06 got us the $6 growth. So just another way to do the same thing. We get the same answer of $106. So the next natural question is, well, how much is the stock expected to be worth in two years? Um, you might think that the right way to look at this is 100 plus $6 plus $6 to get $112. This is actually incorrect. Remember that what we have grows by 6%, not $6 every year. Uh, we need 6% of each year's new total. So uh, again, we uh, remember that after one year, our stock is worth $106. So to calculate how much it will be worth in two years, we need the new starting amount of $106. We can multiply that by 1.06, and that gets us $112.36, uh, which is a bit more than that $112 from earlier um, because we're starting from a higher amount. Now we can think of this in terms of an exponential growth model. So uh, first we'll discuss index funds. Uh, for example, the S&P 500 is an index that tracks the value of stock from 500 large American companies. Uh, generally, it's a good indicator of how the stock market is performing overall. Um, here's a chart of the S&P value adjusted for inflation over time. Um, and you can see that it's generally uh, been going up over time. We can ask the question, why does the stock market take this shape? So the general thought behind this is that wealth grows exponentially. Let's say we invested $185 in today's dollars in an S&P 500 index stock fund in 1950. How much money will we have in 2020? Let's assume that the index gains 4% in value per year, adjusted for inflation, and pays no dividends. We can use our uh, handy-dandy table to sort of calculate this growth. We have a starting value of $185 and a growth rate of 4%. So here we have year zero all the way up to year 70. Um, so for this calculation, we'll take the value from the previous year, in this case, it's 185, multiply by 1.04 to get the 4% growth on it. We have our new total of $192.40. Again, we can continue this way, take the value from last year, um, 185 times 1.04, and get 4% more growth on it. Multiply everything out, and we get $200.10. And we can sort of continue in this way. So 
We keep adding on 1.04, keep getting new totals. And instead of writing these extra multiplications each time, we can simply use exponents. So instead of these 1.04 written over and over, we can take 1.04 to the power of some number. And we can actually use a pattern here because you'll see that we have um, exponents of one, two, and three, which is equal to the amount of years we've had the investment. Um, so continuing in this way, we can just build this exponential growth formula, y equals a, b to the x. Here that here a is the starting value of the investment. In our example, it's 185. And the growth rate b, um, in our case, is 4%. You can see them connected here, starting value of $185, growth rate of 1.04. And we can build the general formula, y equals 185 times 1.04, to the X, where X is years since 1950. So for example, we can just plug and chug into uh, our 10 year calculation, 185 times 1.04 to the 10. This comes out to $273.85. Uh, for 40 years, numbers are starting to get bigger. Um, we get uh, nearly $900 for our total. And for 70 years, the number gets even bigger, um, close to $3,000 uh, in total stock value. Wow, that is pretty crazy. How did we get to that point? So we started and from year zero to year one, we saw an increase in $7.40 for our stock. The next year we saw a little bit higher increase, $7.70 up to $8. Um, but you can see that the growth is accelerating. We're started by growing by $7.40 a year. Now we're growing by $8. And when we actually look in 30 year periods, that growth is naturally larger. So from 10 to 40 years, we gained $614, but from 40 to 70 years, we gained far more, nearly $1,200. So it really starts to accelerate as time moves on. This is happening because of exponential growth, which is aptly named because it's occurring thanks to the exponents. Um, so for example, we can take our table and plot it where the x-axis is years since 1950 and the y-axis is value. Uh, the growth will start off slow on the left side of the curve. It'll start to accelerate and then begin to grow very quickly. Um, and you can see our exponential prediction line in orange fitted to this blue line. Our 4% model, exponential model fits. Of course, there, there is variation. A quick disclaimer here before we move forward. Um, the width variation point is very important. There is variation from that exponential growth line. Specifically, there can be negative variation. And you can see us zooming in to this specific point, um, 2007 to 2010. This indicates the Great Recession of 2008. Um, thousands of families lost their savings because the market crashed. Many investments lost about 50% of their value. Um, so negative variation is very important. It's always important to invest, invest in the long term. And most importantly, seek guidance from a certified financial advisor because this negative variation can be scary. Finally, let's turn to exponential patterns and spread. Um, returning to our original query of wealth inequality. Here we define wealth as all assets. So stocks, home, uh, home value, bonds, et cetera. Um, our chart here gives us the bottom 90% um, of uh, wealth uh, over time for American families. Um, and you can see that for the bottom 90% of families, wealth has grown, which is a good thing, higher wealth um, for these families over time. However, we can add this blue line, which shows all families. Um, and it's important to note the orange line. So for the bottom 90% of families, total wealth grew less than the overall average, which is the blue line, uh, which basically is saying that other people had wealth grow more, people outside of the bottom 90%. Then we can add this gray line, which is the top 10%. And we can see that the orange line, when we chart these on the same axis, is basically flat. The wealth growth for the bottom 90%, the orange line is quite small compared to that of the top 10%. Finally, we can add this yellow line, which dwarfs both the gray and the orange line. That's the top 1%. So the wealth growth is small, even for the top 10%. And for the bottom 90%, the wealth growth is very small compared to this yellow line of the top 1%. Things start to get really crazy with the top 0.01%. Every other line looks small compared to the growth in the top 0.01%. So the bottom line is we see that growth is higher for um, uh, individuals in the higher wealth brackets. And our question is, why is this wealth inequality increasing over time? We're going to start to talk about some mechanics of just addition, multiplication, spread. For example, we take the values 1 and 2. Um, the distance between these two points is 1. Um, and if we add four to each of these values, we add four, we get to five, we get from one to five and from two to six, and the distance is still one between these points. So addition doesn't change the spread between two numbers. However, if we take these same numbers and multiply them, so if we multiply them each by four, one becomes four, two becomes eight, 
look at that. The distance becomes four instead of one. So a multiplication by a number of greater than one increases the spread between points. <clears throat> Again, we can state as multi when multiplying by a number greater than one, big numbers will increase more than small numbers. The spread between the numbers will grow. Since exponential growth is repeated multiplication, the spread can really grow because we're multiplying over and over and over. Um, one example here is uh, an initial difference of a low start of, of wealth, our $185 stock example in 1950, compared to starting with $100,000 in 1950. The initial difference is $99,000, $99,815,000. However, if uh, after two years, we each grows by 4%, um, we can see that our initial uh, $185 low start added $15, while our high start added $8,100. Um, and if we continue in that fashion to get all the way up to 2020, compounding each time, um, we get that our low start added about $2,700, but our high start added $1.5, almost $1.5 million. So our final difference is over $1.5 million compared to our initial difference of just over 100000 Pretty crazy stuff. So returning to our question of why is wealth inequality increasing, and there are uh, definitely uh, additional reasons, globalization, debt, asset choice, which we won't get into here, but here is a main one. Since wealth grows exponentially and exponential patterns increase spread, um, we've been seeing wealth inequality increase over time. So now let's turn to our discussion on this topic. Um, again, we'll be looking at this slide where we have uh, the growth in uh, wealth for different uh, wealth brackets. You can see the chart is dominated by the 0.01%. All other growth pales in comparison to the top 0.01%. And the discussion for you to discuss with your classmates, is wealth inequality a problem? If so, what should we do about it? And if not, why not? That's all for today on Skew the Script. We'll see you next time.